I had to deliver on the same level in a way. So I had, for example, in, in Valkyrie, it wasn't a smart part. I had, I had really, I had leading scenes, leading scenes with Tom Cruise. I was leading him in the scene. So if you're going through that stuff, uh, you're better, actually. So it's, it's challenging. And you, if you if you go through, if you deliver, if everything is fine, you are just better, you know, in your craft. Welcome to the podcast, Werner. I'm so happy to have you live from Germany at 10 p.m. there and one o'clock here. How are you? Good. I'm very fine. Thank you. Just prepping for another casting, Actors Life. <laughs> Actors Life. When do you do your self tapings? In the evenings? Uh, hold on. Uh, it, no, I'm not taping. I'm just learning my lines and tomorrow I tape. Okay, great. So, are you, are actors not going in person in Germany either? And that's an international casting goes to LA. So oh. I can't be there because I'm based in Berlin right now. <laughs> right. But don't you think you have the best of both worlds? Actually, it doesn't feel so bad. Yeah, it's true. It's actually, it's true. Yeah, I'm here and there. And thanks to the internet and thanks to the new technologies, which is so not so new anymore, uh, I can do I can do my work from wherever I want. That's wonderful. Do you have one agent for all of Europe and one LA agent? Yes, I have an I have an agent for for uh, for Germany, which is uh, actually more my agent for whole Europe, and then I have a manager in the U.S. and I have an agent in the U.S. Okay, that's that's phenomenal. All right, let's back up here. How did you get to be so successful, and especially in the genre of the bad guy, the action hero? How did that start? Actually, it started it started before my acting career because uh, I mean the new generation it's different. It's if, if uh, maybe twenty thirty years ago when I started, it was different. So I I have a sports background, which people now maybe have, but at these times they didn't have. So I I was I was competitive. I was in 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 martial arts. I was boxing, kickboxing, taekwondo. So I could that could do that before my acting. So I added it to my to my skills, and it it uh, uh, so it's uh, yeah it was very helpful in the in the in the, in the in the early days of my career. Some people said I played theater in the in the first years too, and uh, so it was everything was there. There was a theater work, there was uh, some uh, martial arts uh, uh, background, and so I and I have a special look. So uh, and then I came into the bad guy, <laughs> the bad guy move. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You do have a special look. I'm trying to figure out what it is about your face that makes you the bad guy. I'm thinking it's possibly in the eyes. There's something Actually, cunning. You, there is, you can you can find at the internet people discussing about where my heritage, where I come from. And ah. actually, they are not, they are pretty true because my heritage, okay, I'm German, I have German blood inside, of course, but I, will, I do have also Eastern European blood and North European blood. Oh, wow. So it's a, it's a kind of, I would, I would base myself in the Baltics. Okay. So Lithuania, Latvia, something like that, which is Northern Europe, which is Eastern Europe, something like that. So I did a film a couple of years ago. It was a very successful Korean movie, but we shot it in Latvia. And there's a funny story about it. Uh, usually people don't look like me in Germany. I don't look real German. And um, so it was I, was, I was very special in Germany from my look. And then I had this shooting in Riga. And I came came to the airport. Somebody picked me up, and uh, they brought me to a stunt guy who had uh, to do my work. He was a little bit younger than me, and we looked into the eyes. He looked me like my younger brother. I've never seen something like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this must be my true home, I guess. <laughs> that That's what is I said to myself. That's so fantastic. I have some Eastern Europe in me too. I always feel like it's in the cheekbones and in the angular face. Um, it's good to have a unique look. Sometimes. You know, for me in my early career, it was a little bit harder, but to have a, a special look when there's so many actors and for people to appreciate that um, yeah. is is wonderful. So you had the skill, you were, you were physically trained, you were active. Did your agent pitch you with that or did you just walk in the room and uh, they they got that vibe from you? 
Actually, my first job I got in Germany, it was a, a, a TV series from America. It was 1994, I guess. It was with Tom Hillerman, the, the guy from Magnum, you know, that, that English guy from Magnum, they had a TV series. So, And they were looking for it because they, they were uh, Americans. They were looking for uh, for some Russians who could do, you know, stunt work, uh, driving the cars like crazy and fall out of the cars and shooting and all that stuff. And I, I could do that. And... Um, so, so does I, that mean little, you do your own stunts? Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. Not anymore. But did, I did my, my, my the, the first years I did my stunts as far as they allowed it. So as far as they allowed it. And uh, so that was actually my first job. I was in three episodes of that thing. And that was actually my first job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, how exciting. You've worked with huge, huge stars. Um, I'm going to name some here, which is phenomenal. Van Diesel, Samuel Jackson. That was your first breakout role, right? in that movie x is it xxx X, X? X, X, X. <laughs> i've been i've been in, i've been in another movie before actually enemy at the gates with jude law and rachel weiss ah. that was before but the part wasn't so big i had some 10 12 shooting days but i'm in the movie just you know seconds you know but it was the first big big gig was uh, uh enemy at the gates mm. yeah before what triple a, x yeah. what a great one uh steven seagal and then Tom Cruise in Valkyrie. Right. What What have you taken away from working with those actors? Uh, what have you learned? What did you offer? What was the experience? Any great stories you want to share? Uh, first of all, it's an honor to work with uh, real famous people. Not famous. When you are famous, mostly you're pretty good. You know, have you have to have something in the background. So, uh, for example, Samuel Jackson is a fantastic actor. So I worked with Kenneth Branagh, with all that English guys, Bill Nighy, and all that stuff. I saw them. I was I was in in the same uh, scene with them. I had lines, leading lines in scenes with these guys. So, at it's uh, uh, it helps you a lot. It helps you a lot. It's it's uh, you can't compare this to some acting classes. You can't compare this to regular shootings, to workshops, and all that stuff. That's a di that's a different kind of thing. When you're on set under pressure with these guys, and you have to deliver, and you do deliver, so it makes you confident. It makes you safe in your job, in your craft. Um, yeah, so far. And that's what uh, most actors would think the opposite. They wouldn't think it makes you confident. They would probably think it's nerve wracking to be with these pros, but you're saying the opposite. You're saying that you felt very much supported. Yes, exactly. I, I felt, I mean, so what is it supported? I had to deliver on the same level in a way. So I had, for example, in, in Valkyrie, it wasn't a smart part. I had, I had really, I had leading scenes, leading scenes with Tom Cruise. I was leading him in the scene. So if you're going through that stuff, uh, you're better actually. So it's, it's challenging. And you, if you if you go through, if you deliver, if everything is fine, you are just better, you know, in your craft. Yeah. But there's one funny thing. The It was actually the first day, the first shooting on a Valkyrie for me. I was leading a bunch of officers behind me. So I was in front. I was talking to, to Tom, Tom Cruise. He was straight behind me. And I was talking to him some stuff, to some lines and all that stuff. The camera was in front of us, you know. And I was walking, I was walking and talking, talking. The other people were talking too and all this stuff. So, and I, the first, after the first take, I asked, did I ask the camera guy? No, I asked Tom Cruise if I'm too, too, uh, 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 too slow or should I be faster and all that stuff. And he said, oh, you lead it. Just do your thing. You set the tone. You set the pace. I set the pace. And that made me really comfortable when he said it to me. Hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's incredible that you have achieved um, th this level of professionalism. Would you say that a lot of it has to do with preparation? Preparation is everything. Preparation is everything. You got to be prepared. On the other hand, if you, if you, uh, if you preparate, if you're, for years or decades in the business, you have a kind of a, a, a big bowl of preparation behind, you know, it's in your, it's in your pocket. So you don't have to prepare for it. But in the first years, prep is everything, 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 everything. You have to, 
you have to create a story for the character. You have to read books. You have to uh, watch documentaries, uh, related movies, and prep, prep, prep. But over the years, you know, it's it's getting a little bit smaller the preparation because you have you know this knowledge. Mm, okay, I love that. It's like it, it, you have this bowl of preparation, or as as Stanislavski says, your golden box, your toolkit. You know, we hear all exactly. these words for it, but I love that you feel that confident that you all already have it in the bag do you still train in any fashion with your acting or um with your physical preparation is there anything that you do to keep yourself fresh between jobs i know we just had this long strike okay first of all i'm doing sports almost every day so and my body has to be in shape but that's my personal thing but it also has something to do with acting if i wouldn't be an actor i wouldn't work out every day so i would out uh, maybe twice a week uh, so a lot of sports uh, and then i just found out i do a lot of uh, breathing techniques every day one hour every day so it keeps my whole system alive you know it keeps my voice alive it keeps my all it it gives me a lot a lot of breathing techniques i do every day every day half an hour in the morning half an hour in the evening i am and so course, impressed still Still, I'm I'm so much in documentaries, so it's kind of a hobby. So I watch a lot of documentaries about everything, whatever I like, almost everything about history, about uh, animals, about whatever. So and that helps a lot. Yeah. Can you explain? I have an idea, but can you explain how that helps a lot? It makes your knowledge deeper about everything. It makes your knowledge deeper about yourself, uh, about people, about uh, why people act. For example, if you if you if you uh, um, uh, if you follow history, uh, you get an idea why people do things. You know, and um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What motivates human behavior? I always tell my acting students. Exactly. I mean, we're we're yeah. studying to be real human beings in, in exactly in what's in your motivation every... behind that's always the most important and when you see the motivation on the first sight mostly it's not true there is something much more hidden behind and so you're looking for that secret that exactly what's hidden the behind. secret why people act like they do yeah. And what better to study other humans? I love that. I've never advised my actors to watch documentaries, but I will now. What a br what a brilliant thing! And I'll we'll take any suggestions <laughs> that you want to give me <laughs> later. Uh, where to start on that endeavor? So okay, so so the breathing, the apparatus, everything you say, it's to keep you more alive. Literally, your cells, your breathing, your heart rate. Um, it, it, it keeps you young. It keeps you vibrant. I, I love this idea. Now, we, uh, of course, met in Mallorca, Spain, and you showed me a little bit of your breathing. And uh, I was I was impressed at your discipline. Um, I know it's hard for actors to stay fresh, to stay in the game. And, you know, you have it better than most that you get auditions. Is there any advice that you want to give to actors, how they might find a path like your own? You have to have a routine in whatever you do. You, in whatever you do. My routine, for example, is uh, sports, is yoga, is breathing. That's a routine for, for many, many years right now. Other people, for example, they are not, not maybe are not so physically, so they have to have a routine for uh, reading a book two hours a day. So you have to have a routine. You can't think if you do something once, it works. It always comes over the over and over and over and over and over again. You have to find your routine. Great, great advice. Are you able to maintain this while you're on set? Some of the routine? Uh, on set, it's just about some when I have a little bit time, some breathing techniques, but that's it. Yeah, it's yeah, you have to do the work before. <laughs> okay, good. Do it before. Okay. You and I have talked about training. Um, obviously, you were exposed to our Strasbourg training, and um, I know you studied with Susan Batson, right? Uh, who's, who studied with Lee Strasberg. Um, any other teachers in Europe or anyone that you want to thank or call out that has, you know, that have influenced your work? 
Yes, my first acting teacher was uh, Franz Josef Langhanke. He was a director at the Deutsche Theater many, many years ago. And he taught me, uh, in the beginning, he said to me, he said to me, in the, maybe in the first hours, he said to me, uh, maybe I can't teach you uh, everything about the craft. You will learn a lot later on set, on your work, theater. Or but what I can tell you is to be an artist, what does it mean? And that's what he taught me. You have to be interested in anything. You have to be interested in architecture. You have in philosoph philo philosophy, in history, in about why pe what people are doing in maybe thousand years ago, two thousand, three thousand years ago, what they did, what they do right now. Uh, study artists. Read books about Dante. Read read, read books about Goethe. About, I'm not so in Shakespeare. I'm more in Goethe, uh, Schiller, Kleist, German stuff. And uh, so be an artist, be an artist, just not only be an actor, be an artist. That's what he taught me. Thank you. Yeah. Do you feel this is a solo journey? Being yes, an artist? it is. Yes, it is. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And as uh, 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 the, uh, you have to start early, you know, to think about it's it's a solo journey. Uh, when you find it out when you're in your thirties, it's too late. You have to find it out very early. It's a solo thing, yeah. And have you had to make compromises because of that? Actually, compromises. Uh, it's more. It's not about in the work. It's more in the private life, mm -hmm. because um, many people don't understand this. They have no clue about how does it work. Uh, so uh, uh, I had to have, I had to say goodbye to many friends in my early years. That's that wasn't so nice actually because there are nice some nice people, uh, but they had no clue about how it is to be an actor. So that you are special, that you are a solo performer or whatever. So it's it's a it's a different kind of breed. Yeah, it is. It does. It, it affects relationships. It affects the idea of exactly you have marriage or children or you know. I certainly have experienced all of this and. It's, you know, once you're on the journey, you're on it and mm -hmm. it's a gift to stay in it. Um, any other things that inspire you, uh, nature, traveling, poetry, anything else that's that no one would know about you, but you're going to share with me now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, nature, of course, nature. Uh, um, I have to be in the nature two, three times a week. So uh, I do a lot of mountain biking, for example, uh, or, in the, uh, or in the forest, running outside in the forest. I never run in the gym on the treadmill. It's horrible. I always go outside and not on the streets. I go in the forest, which is not so easy in Los Angeles. But, <laughs> that is, that is, you know, but you can find something. And so I have to be in the nature. Yeah. Yeah. Many, okay. many. I love nature. I love nature. Yeah. I have a feeling you mentor people and teach, right? Okay. Could you want to talk about that? Like passing on the craft through teaching or uh, leading the way for say it again. others? What do you mean? Uh, do you, again, oh, okay. I'll just ask, do you teach actors? Uh, if I if I would like to teach, or if I do teach actors. Do you do you teach actors and would you like to teach actors? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually, I'm pretty sure I could do that. I'm pretty sure I could do it. Uh, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> yes. It's not so easy, I guess. It's a lot it is, of work. <laughs> it's a ton of work, but it is a work of joy. I can tell you that it, it's a beautiful thing <laughs> to pass it on. Um, what's, what's coming up for you? What are you excited about? What kind of roles do you want to play? Actually, I, you know, it, it's, it's always the same question. What kind of role do you want to play? And my answer is always, I really don't care. I want to work with very, very crafted, good people. If it's a comedy, if it's an action movie, it's a romance, I don't care if long the people are highly professional. That's my goal. Uh, favorite directors, yeah. favorite directors that you'd like to work with that you haven't yet. Yeah, Scott, Ridley Scott, but not anymore. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think right now it was in the past it was different but right now uh uh the work or not the work um 
it's a little bit overrated with the directors. It's a lot of come from the producers, producer side, the CEOs to say a lot of stuff. That was different 20 years ago or 30 years ago, 20 years ago. But right now, they're, they're also, also the directors walk, walking on a small path. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of a lot of decisions come from above. So, Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Except for the really, you'd think the really big ones like Spielberg, Ron Howard, that you know of Tarantino, course, Huber, Tarantino. Yes, you'd hope that they they don't have to answer to anyone but I know things have changed uh certainly in our in our business structure that's interesting um of course I would work I would love to work with Tarantino of course who not yes I know <laughs> who, not? Be, who, who not you'd be perfect for Tarantino I can't imagine that he doesn't know about you and wants to put you in a movie you would have been great in that movie with Christopher Waltz uh um you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah Inglourious Bastards. The thing was, at that time, there were Valkyrie and Inglourious Bastards. They, was, they were produced almost at the same time. The one, yeah, it's very funny. Uh, the one was, you know, more, I would say, a serious movie about history, Valkyrie, and the other one was a kind of very special movie, you know, Inglourious Bastards. And um, the, the, uh, the caster who was involved in Germany for the German guys, he refused to take the guys from Valkyrie. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why. yeah, <laughs> yeah, a competition. But I'm that's... happy with it. I shot Valkyrie. I'm happy with it. I'm happy. Yeah. It's okay. I'm, I'm so happy. I hope that all the actors listening to this will do a deep dive into your work and, uh, you know, really get involved with you. The Lives of Others, which won an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. Um, that must have been exciting. Did you get to go on the circuit with that movie or any of these movies? Um when they came out? Uh, that's a funny story about the lives of others. <laughs> so I was uh, I was shooting something when, when when it was at the Oscars. I was invited from from the from uh, um, producers to come to uh, to Los Angeles to the Oscars, and I was shooting something here. And work is always first. So at at that time, work was always oh shooting my movie here in Germany, which nobody knows anymore. <laughs> but it was work. It was a movie. Right. And. I refused to go there because of where I had actually had a shooting day on the same day, you know, from the Oscars. And I was sitting in front of the TV and they make, you know, they, they showed the movies and they said, and now we come to the lives of others. And then they showed this piece and the piece was with me. I said, you idiot, you see this. Yeah, you uh, on the TV and you uh, are running here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah. too bad, but I mean, I'm glad they picked your clip. That's pretty incredible. <laughs> I got the clip. I got the clip. Yeah, but yeah. you know, it's just a clip. It was life. Yeah, so, anymore. so much of it is promo and the schmoozing and being in the right place. And yeah, and I imagine working you know, being located in Berlin, sometimes you miss some of those things that I'm sure you yeah. would be in invited to if you were here. Uh, do you have any intentions of writing, producing, directing yourself? Yes. Um, actually, I, I have one uh, screenplay, which I uh, wrote by myself. But it's, it's a history thing, you know, I like history. And um, it's not the right time right now for this piece. Maybe in a year, maybe in three years, I don't know, maybe never. So I have one screenplay, uh, which I wrote by myself. And then I'm in two movies which I try to co-produce right now. It's it's just right now, yeah. Excellent. I love that. Are you gonna film in LA or there? Where should I get my, should I get a ticket? <laughs> Europe, Europe, Europe. Okay, okay, but I'll no be German there. films in English, so for the international market, but it's in Europe. A lot of stuff is shot in Europe, in Budapest, in in, in Prague, in Berlin. So, yeah. Okay, great. One is in Budapest great. and the other one is in Bucharest, in Romania and in Hungary. Exciting locations. I love <laughs> it. Uh, I feel really good things for you in 24. I'm so happy to have you on the podcast. Um for all my listeners, can you please share your uh, Instagram or social media anywhere where they can reach out to you? Is it all yeah, under it's, your uh, name? It's just my name. It's Verna Dane. So I don't hide anything. It's just my name, Verna Dane. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, we all want to stay in touch with you and learn from you. And I can't wait to see what's coming up for you in the next year. It's 
Really? Yeah, I did one movie. I did one movie this year, this summer, which is coming out next year, which is really a great one. It's uh, the Children of Kotsara. Uh, the director is a Serbian director. He was he was uh, uh, nominated for the Oscars many years ago and nominated for for the Gold Palm in Cannes. And this is probably his last movie. This guy is 78, 80s, 79, something like that. And um, it's going to be a fantastic movie. Uh, the set was amazing. The actors were amazing. I'm very happy uh, that I did this work uh, in summer in Serbia. Uh, watch out, The Children of Kotsara. Okay, The Children of Kotsara. Okay. Kotsara, Kotsara. Second, it's a Second World War thing. Kotsara. Ah. It's a city in Serbia. Okay. And, About and concentration just... camp for, for children at that time. It's very hard, heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking. Tough scenes, really. Wow. Yeah. How long did you film that for? Two months. Two months. Two months. Yeah. In and yeah. out, Serbia, Berlin, in and out, Belgrade, Berlin, boom, boom. Two months altogether. Yeah. Wow. I think I think mm -hmm. it's more fun to be an international actor. I don't know. I think I have it wrong just trying to work in Hollywood. I mean, there's a whole world out there for actors, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think we all, we're so myopic with Hollywood. So I encourage everyone to listen, to try to have a global career like Werner. I mean, why not? Global career, definitely. You, know, you gotta be, a, you have to work in different countries. I worked, I'm a, my, my God, I worked in the US many times. I worked in, in all over Europe. I worked in New Zealand. I worked, uh, so it everything gave me something. Scotland gave me something, England gave me something, Serbia gave me something, Lithuania, Poland, Czech, Italy, Austria, and France, everything, you know, from everything you get something, you know, mm. because the work is always a little bit different in different places. So, yeah, work in wherever countries you can, so much countries you can. <laughs> okay. From everything, you get something. I hope everyone heard that. I'm so happy to have you today. Thank you so much, Werner. Let's stay in touch. And uh, we'll be all following you and your success into the new year. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Werner. You have raised the bar high for us as actors, artists, and creators. If you'd like to hear more of my podcast, please visit my website at diaryofanactress.com. Until the next time, stay inspired.